Billy, moving on to our next list here, we have ranking the NFL's best offensive play callers ahead of the 2021 season. Now, this was made June 9th. They only have, I think, six to seven guys on this list right now. They didn't do the full 32, so I guess that's good. Uh, you know, it saves us a little bit of just breath, I guess, and uh, our health. But uh, for those of you who are new, go ahead and subscribe, like the video if you enjoy. Go subscribe to Billy's channel, Owen the C. We are trying to get him to 1,000 subscribers. I will have that in the pinned comment down in the comment section below. But Billy, for the purposes of this list, I know we've been going from 32 up, but since there's only six or seven guys, we're going to go from number one down. So are you ready for this? Ready to go. All right. Number one, we have Matt LaFleur of the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, he is the head coach. I mean, honestly, he's he's kind of an underrated guy. I mean, Matt LaFleur has been doing a phenomenal job as the Packers head coach. Um, I don't think it's his fault that the you know Packers front office has decided to go absolutely insane. But do you feel that Matt LaFleur is the number one pass caller here in the NFL? No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't think he's bad, but top of the line? Number one. I, yeah, you're forgetting about a lot of guys. There, there's a couple of guys in there that I'd probably have against Matt LaFleur. I mean, I don't know if number one is the right ranking for him, but I'm just saying I'm, I'm happy he's got some recognition because he is pretty no, good. Yeah, no, he's not bad. He's definitely not a bad coach either, but to say that he is the number one pass play caller, I mean, I just think Andy Reid, McVay, and Kyle Shanahan are all better than him without even thinking of every team, just off the top of my head, all three of those guys. Number two, Brian Dabble, DeBull, Brian DeBull of the Buffalo Bills coming in at number Dable. two. Dable, Brian Dable. This one, I don't like this one either. This list definitely 0 for 2 for me to start. I didn't like the way he handled the team last year. It felt like last year the Bills – like, in the playoffs, they never – I remember it being a thing that they never ran the ball. They just, like, gave up on the run game, and they were like, well, we're not a running team. We're a passing team. We're just going to throw, 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 throw. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing an interview specifically with one of his players that was, like, an offensive lineman. I can't remember. I apologize for not knowing who. But he was talking about how, you know, Brian Dable, he, he does he does what he does really well. And he was – this was an op, a player talking about a coach. And I was thinking about it, and the – and the question was about the fact that, you know, they throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. And gener generically speaking, right off the line, they like to run block more than they like to pass block. So the whole thing, I was thinking about the context, the dynamics, and I was like, should a coach really do what he likes to do? Or should he do what his players are good at? You know, like the, the comment from the player was, well, the coach does what he does really well. That's great, because that's saying the coach is good at his job. But shouldn't the coach really kind of build it around the people? You know, I don't know that that or that I don't I don't love that. I know I get that he's a hot name because Josh Allen blew up, and he does get credit for that, of course. But I don't know. It bothered me that he got away from just any semblance of balance because I think the balanced team always has a better chance to win. No, I will say, I mean, Pro Football Focus, obviously, they're a numbers website. So they specifically just look at the data and go, well, obviously, Matt Lafleur is the best because he has the best numbers. Brian Dable. He has the best num, you know, he has numbers, so he's the second best, you know? Like, they look at it probably from a pure analytical, what's on paper numbers standpoint. I would have to guess, right? I mean, probably, but then I'd make the uh, case against LaFleur, like, I mean, we could all call plays for Aaron Rodgers, right? I mean. Right, so, I mean, I think that they just kind of look at, like, I, but, see, I, but I don't think they, they apply that. They just say, well, Matt LaFleur has the best numbers deep analytic numbers so he's the best you know i don't know if they take i don't know what they take into account you know i was reading the explanation here at the top and it seems like they just use their deep dive numbers and then that's what they base this list off of i think i don't know but i think number three See, then that that takes me away from all right go ahead you go, go ahead, read the list. number three is andy Reid of the kansas city chiefs definitely deserving of course mm-hmm I, I think I do agree with that. I mean, obviously, Andy Reid, we all know how great he is. He's innovative, right? Yeah. So good spot. You have to about, just think about how long he's been in the league. You don't last that long in the league without being able to be innovative and willing to change and adapt. So. Right, I agree. Number four, and I know you're going to lose your mind. I know you are. John Gruden of the Las Vegas Raiders. 
is at number four for the top best the right the NFL's best offensive play callers ahead of the 2021 season. John Gruden, old Johnny boy, Super Bowl winning head coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, by the way, is at number four. Now I'm not knocking John Gruden. I still like John Gruden. Still a good guy. But at number four in terms of offensive pass callers going into this upcoming season. Billy, your thoughts. I'm very surprised. I'm not going to knock him either out of respect for John Gruden. But I'm just going to mention again the names. McVay and Shanahan. Really, Kyle Shanahan, I think. I know that he, like, you know, people get mad at him because they, they blame him for choking away, you know, the Falcons Super Bowl and then the Niners, you know, had the lead and all that in, in a separate Super Bowl. But Kyle Shanahan, like, he had better be on this list. Kyle Shanahan, if, if he's not on this list, that's just unnerving, honestly, because Kyle Shanahan has taken what I would consider mediocre to good quarterback talent and made them and exponentially better. I mean, he worked with Nick Mullins and C.J. Beathard and made them look okay. Like, at what point do we, like, Kirk Cousins, don't forget Kyle Shanahan was a part of RG3's rookie season when RG3 blew up the league. So, like, Kyle Shanahan, as far as being a play caller, to me, he's, like, literally top-notch. And the fact that they're just throwing these names out ahead of him makes me a little mad. I'm a little bit unsettled. I feel you. Number five, Joe Brady of the Carolina Panthers. No relation to Tom Brady, by the way. This is the top six, by the way. The top six offensive play callers going in to the 2021 season. Um, Joe Brady here at number five. You know, obviously, that Carolina Panthers coaching staff with Matt Rule gets a lot of credit. Joe Brady was a hot head coaching candidate last uh, off, this offseason. So, uh, good for them, right? Yeah, I'm not mad at it. And number six... Byron Leftwich of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're going to dive into this. The former Jaguars first round pick returned to Florida and helped acclimate a new, albeit Hall of Fame quarterback, a veteran tight end, a rookie right tackle, and a couple of secondary receivers en route to the Bucs' first Super Bowl title since 2002. That the offense overcame injuries to Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, and the interior of the offensive line at times, and improved as the season progressed, landed Leftwich in this spot. The team earned the second most wins above replacement per dollar, geez, that's a stat, in the passing game among NFL teams in 2020. So they're saying that the reason Byron Leftwich is here right now is because of what he was able to do while Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, and Alex Kappa, and, um, you know, uh, Ali Marpet being hurt at times. That's one of, that's the big reason that Byron Leftwich is here on this list at number six, number six offensive play caller in the entire NFL. Byron Leftwich, 2021, number six. Billy, your thoughts? It's it, it's wrong. Shouldn't be there. I think who gets credit for those, uh, you know, the injuries and the players, therefore, having to step up? I think where is the credit to Jason Light for putting good replacement players in position? And, I would, you know, it's tough with this because we'll never really know, right? It's always going to be a, well, who do you give more credit to? You know, do you give it to Byron? Do you give it to Bruce? Do you give it to Tom? It's kind of a three-way pie. And Bruce Arians... You know, he might, he kind of takes himself out of it, you know, in his own, like, quotes and things like that. So you say, you know, do you give it to Tom or do you give it to Byron? I mean, I don't know. You know, you could argue either. But to me, like, one of the best things Byron Leftwich did last year was get out of his own way. And I don't know if that's – that almost feels like a backhanded compliment, as I say. I don't really mean it to be because it is – and I would say a similar thing about Bruce. It is a it's a hard thing to do to swallow your ego and accept advice or help or whatever from someone else. But Byron Leftwich, to say that he's number six, I mean I get again, I guess it's the same thing with Matt LaFleur. You know, how much credit are you gonna give to the quarterback? How much credit are you gonna really give to the play caller? To me, in both of those instances, I'm siding with the quarterback over the play caller for credit to be given. You know, like I don't think that I don't think that Byron left, which is anywhere near sniffing the top 10 if Tom Brady doesn't come over here. So 
at what point did that make him? You, you know, I, uh, all right, go ahead. What do you think, James? I mean, okay. If you have Byron Leftwich on here at number six, you know, you would have thought that Byron Leftwich, he would have been one of the hottest candidates to be a head coach, right? He would have been getting interviews left, right, and center. You know, much like some of these guys, Joe Brady got a lot of interviews. Um, Brian uh, Dable got some good interviews. Obviously, Matt LaFleur, Andy Reid, John Gruden, they're already head coaches. But, you know, I, how many interviews did Byron Leftwich get, Billy? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, like two? I mean, it, did he get two or zero? I thought he got zero. He might have got, I think he got zero. So, <laughs> so I'm not saying this to knock Byron Leftwich. I like Byron Leftwich. He's a good guy. He's an awesome guy. I've always been a fan of Byron Leftwich. But exactly like what you said, who do you give credit to, right? I mean, there's a lot of guys that probably have some say in how this offense is run. Byron Leftwich, you know Bruce Arians still has some say. Of course he does. Tom Brady, of course, has some say. Bruce Arians has been very open about that, Tom Brady having say. Um, you know, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, you know, of course they got injured. Guys had to come in and step up. Scotty Miller, Tyler Johnson. Um, you know, even Jadon Mickens at times, you know, some of those guys had to come and step up. Rob Gronkowski got in there when OJ Howard got hurt. Cameron Brate did some good stuff. Uh, Aaron Stinney came in and g did a good job. Um, you know, obviously Ryan Jensen moving over to guard and having AQ Shipley, that was good too. But there's so many guys you could give credit to. Like, you know, obviously Harold Goodwin, the run game coordinator, offensive line guy. Um, Tom Moore is an offensive assistant. Clyde Christensen, the quarterback's coach. Like, you know, there's there's so many offensive guys there. It's like, I, I think it's a, a, a gumbo of credit, you know? And let's, and let's also, too, like, reemphasize Tom Brady. Like, I understand. I don't want to be one of those people that thinks that, like, Tom Brady just, you know, came over to the Bucks and just touched us and we became magic and everything he does is amazing. Because that's not the case either. But to think that Tom Brady doesn't have more football knowledge than Byron Leftwich has is lunacy. Like Tom Brady just has been doing it long. He's he's doing it longer at a higher level than Byron Leftwich has ever known. So, you know, like to, to say that Byron, I, I don't know. Like Tom Brady is just a better football mind than his own coach. And I'm not just, I don't say that lightly, I you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not, we're not knocking Byron here. We both like Byron Leftwich a lot, right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe he'd be in the top 10. Maybe he'd be in the top 15. You know, like, we're not saying Byron Leftwich is a bad offensive coordinator. We think that, we both think that he does a good job. But whenever, you, I mean, Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan are not on this list. Those guys are like darlings in terms of offensive innovation. And I actually have the list from 2020 here, Billy, going into the 2020 season. Andy yeah. Reid was number one. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury was number two. He's not on this list, by the way. Kellen Moore, it's... number three. Greg Roman, number four. Kyle Shanahan was number five. <laughs> Kellen Moore. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how Pro Football Focus ranks these things. But I'm it's saying pretty... it would it would make more sense for Byron Leftwich to be a top 10, maybe a top 15, um, because you've all you've got to balance it out, right? You've got to consider all the pieces that are there. You've got to consider all the guys that are making this – train work this engine work um i just feel like kyle shanahan and sean mcveigh should have been on here you know right and credit is to be given to byron like i said he mid you know he changed route mid course you know and that is very tough to do like the whole bucks offense did that last year and that is hard you know but like what they were doing at the end of the season is nowhere near what they were doing at the beginning of the season so that's like that's a difficult thing to overcome and he deserves credit for that, for for willing to, for being willing to do it, and then being able to execute it with his guys. But to sit there and tell me that he's number six because he coached the goat to the seventh Super Bowl that the goats won, I'm like, well, I, you know, like I don't really know about that. Like that, that's a little iffy to me. Like, oh, Matt Lafleur coached Aaron Rodgers to his fifth NFC Championship game or his sixth NFC Championship game, I think fifth. So, like, at what point are we? You know, the player matters. You know, like, to me, I know you were saying in the beginning that they're just looking at the deep dive into the analytics, and that's fine. I respect that. But the players on the field matter. Sean McVay is, was coaching Jared Goff. You know, Kyle Shanahan dealt with three different quarterbacks, four different quarterbacks last year. Like, come on. You yeah. know, the situation matters. I think that the, there's a lack of perspective on some of these rankings. Yeah, so me personally, I'd have Byron Leftwich maybe in the top ten, you know, at the very least, top 15, maybe top 12. 
but maybe there's a couple of guys you'd want to consider putting in there, say, above a guy like Byron Luftwich. I mean, hey, shout out to Byron Luftwich for getting this credit right. I mean, it's not his fault. He's, uh, you know. Uh, no, he's taking Hey, when you get an opportunity, right, you're presented with an opportunity, you run with it, you know, make the most out of it. He got an opportunity to coach the greatest quarterback ever with a stacked offensive skill, like skilled team around him, and he's running with it, right? He made the most of his opportunity. Another one I want to, I got to say, because I got to like dig the needle a little bit deeper. You know who's not on this list, and I think it's hilarious, and we didn't even mention him, which is even funnier? Who is that? Sean Payton. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. That's amazing. I love that he's not on this list. I didn't That's even think about that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of guys you could put on here. I would love to see this uh, this list expanded to maybe like a top 10 or a top 15. Um, I don't know why they didn't do that, but it's it's interesting, man. Again, hey, no discredit to Byron Leftwich. I mean, I know it kind of sounds like we were trashing Byron Leftwich. We're not. We're happy that he's number six. Hey, more kudos to him. You know, maybe, you know, that's awesome that he got number six. That That's great for us. Good. You know, uh, you just got to also think about some of the other guys who didn't get there, you know? Yeah. So, absolutely. guys, what do you think about this? Uh, Byron Lethwich, the number six offensive play caller going into the 2021 season. Uh, give us your thoughts. What do you guys think? Let us know. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. We will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, go ahead and subscribe to Billy on ON The Sea. We're trying to get his channel to 1,000 subscribers, and it would be greatly appreciated. It will be in the pinned comment down in the comment section below. But goodbye for now, and go Bucks.